how on earth are you supposed to balance strength training, weight training, alongside Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, martial arts, or any other sport in general? The toughest thing about training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or any martial art is the amount of gains that you lose. Now, it's not because wrestling other men sitting on their heads, and I've even tapped to dick to face before. The point I'm trying to make is, it's not that jiu-jitsu is catabolic and that training martial art kills your gains, it's this. There's only so much energy that you can allocate to training in a week. And that amount of energy is gonna change as you get older, as you have kids, as your job demands more of you, whatever it is. So let's say for argument's sake, you can only allocate eight units of energy to training a week. Now, if you can put all of that energy into one place, that's great. Because I had someone in the comments to my last video showing off about how they can deadlift more than me. Of course you can, that's what you do. That's where you're allocating your blocks to. Do you know where I'm allocating my blocks to? Heel hooks, guillotines, wrestlings, leg picks, judo hip tosses. And believe you me, if you try bringing that cheek to me face to face, you'll be finding out. This is the last guy that tried giving it large. This was an overconfident white belt. Fucking white belts. Now it's not a bad thing to train for two things at the same time, but let's think about this. Let's say your goal is to gain four kilograms of muscle, let's say. Now let's say I say that's going to take a year. Cool. But now, if you've just let me know that you're also training for a marathon, as well as wanting to gain four kilograms of muscle, this is just an example. Let's say the green squares now represent your running training. That amount of energy that you have in a week is now being split in two directions. So that four kilograms of muscle may now take two years because you've halved the amount of energy that you're allocating to obtaining that goal. Now, depending on what's more important to you, when you get that news, you might go, do you know what? I'm going to limit the amount of running training I'm gonna do and prioritize the muscle growth. Now it might take you, I don't know, 15 or 16 months. I don't know, but you get my drift. There's only so much energy that you can allocate to training a week. And if you drink too much, there's even less energy. If you have a shit diet, there's even less energy. Don't respect sleep and other factors, there's less energy, which is only gonna inhibit your potential for gains. Where you allocate your time is probably gonna be dependent on what level you're at. And counterintuitively, if you're a beginner, like a white belt or a blue belt, you might want to allocate less to the gym and more to training because your skill development is probably gonna be more important than your strength. That's not to say to neglect your strength component because it's gonna have a big part to play in reducing your chance of injury. It's just saying from a technical proficiency standpoint, you'd be better off learning how to escape a pin than trying to build the strength you would need to push that person off you because a lot of jiu-jitsu is about mitigating your opponent's ability to use their strength. I would much rather my opponent spent more time in the gym than they did learning technical escapes or submissions. But anyway, back to the video. And I'll be honest, years of late, I've been the worst person to go to for advice in this realm because I've almost completely and fully neglected weight training in a bid to just train jiu-jitsu. I just enjoy training jiu-jitsu more than I enjoy lifting weights. Month by month, I look less like a personal trainer. My arms, chest, and legs continue to shrink, and the only thing that gets thicker are my ears and my neck. So I'm not coming at this from the angle of, oh my God, I know everything, let me teach you about it. I'm from the angle of, this is what I've started doing myself, and maybe it might work for you. In my last book, I mean, <clears throat> I'm sorry, in my last Sunday Times number one best-selling book, How to Be Confident, I made a point about courage and confidence and how it can kind of transfer to our training. I'll explain. Let's say many of you don't possess the courage or the confidence you need to approach a young lady for a number or to chat her up. That's completely understandable. So rather than just saying you don't have the confidence or courage to do it, I say to people, what do you have the courage or confidence to do? And if we break it down and make the goal small enough, everyone has an amount of courage they can muster to accomplish it. Okay, you can't ask her for a number, you can't ask her out. Could you go talk to her? Yeah. Could you go say hello? Yes. Okay, so we're looking at the minimum barrier to entry to take action. So therefore, I would say to someone, then just go say hello to a stranger you find attractive and we'll reconvene in a month's time and maybe we'll say hello and take the next step up and give her a goofy compliment. I like your hat. So much of improving people's confidence is actually very much like seeing people's training. We're not gonna look at the grandiose goal that's at the top of mind. We're gonna look at what could you do today? And then what could we do to progress from there? So I had the same discussion with myself surrounding training. Okay, James, you are not going to do a full weight session and then train jiu-jitsu. Not only that, you just don't have the capability to recover from both of those things. So either you're gonna have to dial back your jiu-jitsu, not gonna happen, or we're gonna dial back your weight training. That's what I'm gonna do. So right now for my existing training split, I'm doing three sets a day. That's it, three working sets. Because I asked myself, okay, James, could you get in for one set? 
I was like, yeah, I probably could. But I want to get in here for one set, you know, doing a bit of mobilization, warming up, having a can of Monster, whatever it is, seems a lot of effort for just one set. So then I thought maybe, okay, maybe I do six sets. I do two exercises. And already that part of my brain was like, can't really be fucked to do that. And I know that if I do stick to that, it's only going to be for a couple of weeks. And then I'll be back to just doing jujitsu. So in the beginning, I'll be honest with you, I said three days a week, three sets. Monday, three sets squat. Wednesday, three sets bench. Friday, three sets of row. I'm not ashamed. I'll show you my workout now. Now, this is the least amount of volume I've ever done in my life. But what I'll do is I'll put a grid up here of a volume times intensity chart. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. I'm doing 18 sets a week. That's usually what I do a session. So as far as a volume standpoint, it's low. But as far as a training morale standpoint, I'm happy. I'm consistent. I'm training concurrently properly for the first time in ages. And the mindset of turning up to the gym knowing I'm only going to do three sets, I take my time. I'm resting like seven minutes in between and getting in Twitter debates. I've never rested so long or felt so good. And whenever I get that urge and inkling in my mind to say, James, you could just skip the gym today. I go, bro, three sets, just three sets. And a lot of you are going to point out the fact, James, I thought you were anti-bro split. I am, but this is not for hypertrophy and muscle growth. This is just to keep up some level of weight training whilst I'm doing six to seven hours of jiu-jitsu a week. And a lot of that is sparring. Believe it or not, my goals aren't even to get that strong. They're not even to get that swole. My goals are just to do some training. Waking up the next day and thinking, I probably could have done a bit more yesterday. It's definitely better than waking up thinking, I did way too much yesterday and I'm wrecked. So to wrap up the point of the video, your objective is to find balance between your training in the gym and your training on the mats or other sport. That balance is gonna be determined by what you need more of and what is more important to you. In the beginning, start off incredibly easy with low volume, even low intensity and build it up. You will know when you've overstepped the mark of what is enough you can recover from in a week. If you wish to push the boundaries of what you can recover from in a week, you need to prioritize your sleep, your nutrition, your recovery. Yeah, there are supplements out there and creatine and all things like that, but you and I both know if we were to put our phone down half an hour earlier and go to bed, we'd probably reap the benefits of 10 supplements combined. All of this that we do, whichever endeavor in sport we're in, is about progression. It's about understanding and finding out where we're at and where we can go to next. I've got to do my three sets of exercise so I can go home. Hope you enjoyed the video.